We're here in London, uh, in the neighborhood of London Fields at Secret Sunday Studios. I'm a bit nervous, but uh, I'm just hoping not to be the, the first epic fail. I think, uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I've got some like things that I had prepared before that I never did anything with, and just like some samples, some vocal samples of my own actually, that I'm too embarrassed to, I think, do right now. But, uh, but yeah, I wanna mess around with that a little bit. I'm Baltra and I'm about to go against the clock for fact.
Through or to left? Four and a half left? Yeah. Okay, cool.
besides nearly kicking over the entire studio. Uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was pretty good. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Got across the vibe that I was going for with the drum pattern and the, you know, the vocals that I had pre-recorded. Uh, so it was a lot of fun, yeah, testing out some, some new stuff. I wish I would have had more time, <laughs> but um, no, it was pretty, it was pretty, uh, pretty perfect for, and pretty concise for what I wanted to do, but maybe I would have paid a bit more attention to it. If I had more time, I would have changed the velocities of some of the percussion and make it more realistic sounding, but that's just an attention to detail that I kind of am really particular about. It's a nightmare, but it's really cool. It's, uh, you know, it really forces you to be efficient. I think that that's one thing that's uh, quite important in the arrangement stage of, of making music, you know. For me, there's the creative stage and then there's the step away. Don't think about changing anything, just how to make it the most efficient for what you're trying to um, translate to the listener. Came in a little early to get familiar with the gear. I used this Gen um, FX1000 to kind of overlay the sub bass line that I threw in there and written. Um, it's got a really cool like dubby sound that's like proto, kind of this, you know, garage feeling and vibe. Um, so that was that's a really sick one. Um, I was messing around with the TR8 of some back layer and then the M1, I didn't have a chance to hit that, but it's got some really beautiful strings that I would have loved to lay on top, but well, maybe that's what I wish I've had more time for. It would have been to kind of jam out with a beautiful little symphony or something it was like. I like to build the drums first to kind of build the groove or the idea of what kind of track I want to make, what style, and then go from there with um, something more of the atmospheric or setting the ambiance, whether it's uh, a melody or some pads first and laying that down. And then I kind of jump into the bass to sort of fill in the gaps or really hit what kind of groove I want it to be ultimately. So for the drum programming, I use Machine. The samples I use are things that I've just uh, sort of accumulated over time. I don't really like to use the, the hardware that much because I wind up going in and fixing the sensitivity and velocity anyway, anyhow. So I, I kind of, it, for me, it's easier, uh, more efficient just to draw things in. So I started with the kick drum. Um, oh. And then just put some claps in there that are, uh, low pass, the sample's already low pass. And then just mess with the groove here with two different hats to kind of play off of the tonality of each one. Slightly different grooves, um, but pretty consistent, you get the idea of it. And then I added this these shaker uh, with a bit of swing to them just to fit in with the, the two-steppy groove, so. Just, I just adjusted the velocities a little bit to sort of give it a, a play, live play feel. To it. So that's it for the for the uh, for those drums. I threw in these shakers here. Um, can mute it for a second. Sort of like a mix between a hi hat and a shaker, um, just to also complement that groove. So it just fills in the space and gives again another texture, um, which to me is always important. Um, then after that, I threw in um, these open hi hats, these Lino Nines, just to give it a little bit more pumping energy. Um, as if it didn't need any more, um, a little break here, which I just time stretched. It was already, it's a show and bass break, it slowed it down a bit. Um, so, with all of that going, Cool. And then I'm um, throwing this bass line that I had written. Um, it's in F minor. Sometimes when I'm creating, I'll just create melodies and bass lines and things like that with actual, without actually composing a whole record. Normally when I'm focusing more on sound design and trying to find out sounds that um, complement what kind of music I make and, you know, and inspire me. So uh, when I'm messing around with that, uh, I'll sometimes write some melodies based on the compliment and, and so on, so therefore. Um, my, the plugin that I use for that, that I really, really love, is called Diva uh, by UHE. Uh, I think it's gonna open here, yeah. So for the bass line, it's just a preset that I've manipulated a little bit with the, um, with the cutoff, it's called a picked bass. It just kind of gives a little bit of a live feel to it. To overlay that, I used the Gen SX1000 
um, with just like a little dubby kind of bass, um, just to give it some more character. That's what you get there. Um, and then I tossed in these vocals that I had recorded fairly recently. Um, Threw some effects on them here when they're when they're dry. They're kind of silly, it's just like a sort of auto tune vocoder. But uh, just putting some some reverb and some echo, a little bit of compression and EQing, uh, e cutting out like the the low mids. Actually, cutting out a bit across the spectrum, a little bit of the highs, but quite a lot around uh, about 250. Uh, carving that out really allows it to sit really well in the mix. Um, and then uh, about just the melody. So for out of these like pretty spacey pads, um, and show you those. We're just part of just create like a nice atmosphere. Um, and I layered that, the same exact melody with uh, this sort of sine deep piano, uh, which you can hear on its own here. It's really nice, um, really smooth, and the, the lower register notes uh, give it a really warm feeling. Uh, so we got that. And then on top of that, I threw in this little sequence. It's got a bit of echo. It just kind of goes well, floats well with it. Um, yeah, that's really it. So we can bring it all back in with the bass line. That has. This is what you get without any of the percussion. It's just a good feeling. Um, and then I can just bring everything back in. You know? I would say make make mistakes um, and embrace them and just try to learn from them. There's so many beautiful aspects and beautiful mistakes that you can make in the studio and I think um, a lot of times that's when the magic happens. It's good to know all the te technical stuff and the techniques behind it all but yeah it's cool to stumble upon some, some, some really cool stuff and some of my favorite elements of my own work has happened with, with mistakes. <laughs>